That truly is a sentence that I feel like someone from the Victorian era would pass out reading. Like, that does not make any sense to me. Peach PRC opener for eras. Yeah, Taylor, what's going on? Hit me up, colleague. We're on the same level. <laughs> We're co-workers. Temporarily puts my lesbianism away to enjoy Josh by Peach PRC. I also did the same thing to write the song, so we have that in common. <laughs> She's eating it up in those wings, but they must be so uncomfortable to wear for so long. They are a sensory nightmare. Once they're on, it's like there's, a, there's like a big metal chunk that is just like strapped to my back. And when I move, it's just like a cheese grater on my spine. Truly, it is the worst thing I've decided to do, but I have committed to the bit. <laughs> I'm so happy to see music looking like healing. Just a bunch of hurting people united by experience and your talent. Oh, that's actually really nice. That's really sweet. I love that so much. Well, I don't love that people are hurting, but I love that we're united. <laughs> if Grilled Cheese's Glee episode came out today, Finn would be singing God is a Freak by Peach PRC, not losing my religion. That truly is a sentence that I feel like someone from the Victorian era would pass out reading. Like, that does not make any sense to me. If Grilled Cheese's Glee episode, I don't remember the Grilled Cheese's Glee episode, but I would love to have had God is a Freak in Glee. I loved watching that show. Yeah, Losing My Religion is out, God is a Freak is in. I'm obsessed with this line from Peach PRC's song, Loved You Before, so I made this sticker. Happily in love doing bug stuff, stop, that's really cute. I love the bug stuff, like people have just been making their own bug stuff merch and I'm obsessed with it. There's one shirt that somebody made that was like, um, it, I think it just said happily in love doing bug stuff and it was like two ladybugs in love and I wear it all the time. Like it was genuinely like such cute merch. Bug stuff is like, who knows? It's it's up to the imagination because we don't know what bugs do, but I probably did in one past life. Perfect for you by Peach PRC, sampling Stars Are Blind is one of the wonders of the modern world. Cute, that's really sweet, I love that. So I really actually thought it was never gonna see the light of day, like I just did it because it was a song for my now girlfriend who was a girl that I liked at the time and I just thought it would be cute to like, cause we listened to that song on our first date. So I was like, this will be cute. I'll throw it in the song for her and like, it'll be the song about her and like, I'll play it for her. But then I sent it to my label as well and was like, what do you think? And they were like, we love it. And I'm like, I didn't think like it would get approved cause like it's Paris Hilton, but um, it did. And, and now Paris Hilton loves it. And it's just been this like insane dimension that I've stepped in, like this whole different reality. Like that it's, yeah, it's crazy. It doesn't feel like real life. Petition for Peach to cover a Hannah Montana song next. I would love to cover a Hannah Montana song. I have been wanting to do that for so long, but I need recommendations on which song, because they all go crazy. Me When God Is A Freak by Peach PRC came on on my Spotify for the first time, and she sang, watching me get in heavy on the couch, <laughs> accidentally listening to the censored version of the song. <laughs> oh my God, I forgot that I did that. That is so funny. I forgot that I did a censored version of that song. I don't think I've actually like heard it played anywhere. Like I remember recording it now after seeing this tweet, but that is so funny. I wonder if there's like a coffee shop somewhere that's playing Getting Heavy on the Couch. They get like spliced in. It's like you'll hear like a, a random like chop where it's like the heavy on the couch, staying pure for a wedding. <laughs> like it sounds very like I've come in days later and recorded it. Sometimes it's just easy. Like you'll just kind of be like, like in F you goodbye, like I can just say F instead of the F word, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear. <laughs> but um, yeah, so, but then other times where it's like the word railed, like what do you say in replacement of that? So I was like getting for risky, like I don't know, like we had to go through a few different options and I was like, they all just sound goofy. The song's goofy as it is. So like we just went with heavy, I guess I don't remember doing that. <laughs> but yeah, you'd have to get creative sometimes because I do swear quite a bit in some of my songs. I genuinely just dated a Josh for years and didn't know that that was a thing that you should avoid J names because someone should have told me that at 15 because that was not a thing then. I loved that like at the time people were kind of being like hold on the J name thing is a phenomenon and that was at the same time I put that song out we were all kind of collectively realizing it at once but I think it's just something to do with Gen Z it's just the names that parents were calling their kids. I've always been so fascinated by it and I think maybe that's why I gravitate towards like songs that I listen to as like a preteen or even in like the 2010s when I was in high school and going to house parties and stuff. It makes people happy. It makes them think like, oh, I remember that happy memory, but it also gives a sort of like 
yearning for more of it. Like I want something, I want to feel that again so that what's the next new thing that will give me that happy feeling. You know what? I love Selena and the scene. There's like, it comes naturally, that music video went crazy. Like even Lizzie McGuire, like I cover what dreams are made of in my set and everybody loves that song. Like it, it goes off, like the whole crowd is singing. I'm still like on stage in the same stripper hills that I would like dance on like in the strip club with like these big platform pleasers and like it's a bit different because I'm jumping now and I wasn't jumping in the strip club but it's it feels so much more like I'm performing and I'm enjoying performing because I loved that part about stripping like I loved the sisterhood and I loved the performance of it all like I loved feeling like sexy and pretty and putting on a show and I would play these like bubblegum pop songs and I would like lip sync them as I'm like on the pole and it was so much fun so now being able to actually sing my own songs and do you know do similar kind of performance it feels so liberating and freeing in a way that doesn't leave me feeling a little bit demeaning. It's really actually like, um, it comes like naturally for me because in the strip club, like with the girls outside of work, we would make a habit of calling each other by our stage names outside of work, just so that when you are in front of customers, if you like go to refer to your friend, you don't want to accidentally drop their real name and be like, oh, sorry, like, and say their stage name again. So we got into the habit of only knowing each other by stage names. And so for like four years before I was even signed and putting music out, I was Peach. And, and, and it was, I had a friend that like, not even to her wedding day, I, I knew her real name. Like I saw like the sign as I walked in and was like, oh, like, I thought you were Darcy. <laughs> like, I didn't know that was your real name. And so I have so many friends that call me Peach and it just feels normal to me. Like people that are in my real sort of close circle will call me Shaylee, but, but most people, a lot of my friends call me Peach and everyone I meet calls me Peach. All the names in the song were originally like my real friends and they're all musicians and like people in the Australian music industry. So it was kind of a bit, like I, because I didn't think it would see the light of day, so I had to go back into the studio and, and be like, let me change the names real quick, because I don't want to like cause more drama. But I did have to reach out to um, the girl that I was not a good friend to, and, and and be like, hey, so I wrote this song that I actually didn't think anyone was ever going to hear. I'm really sorry, um, but now it's it's getting released. And and she was originally a little bit upset, as you would be, um, but then you know she came around and was as was actually very graceful about it and and, and kind. So it is it was a happy ending in the end and yeah now I'm with my girlfriend and I love her very much. That was a pretty recent discovery for me because because of that reason because I hadn't seen a lot of like hyper femme queer people um, and like I know they've always existed I just haven't seen a lot of them represented and I so it was like oh I must just fit into like the bisexual category because that's what I look like and that's what I you know the people I'm around are also really feminine or they'd be queer as well but it was only like that sort of category but um so it took me a long time to be like super feminine and girly seemed like something that would be a performance for men and something that would be attractive to them. And then realizing you're not attractive to them is kind of like, oh, so this is just because I enjoy this. I'll start with like some chords and like on GarageBand on my iPad, because I, you know, I've got nails, I can't play the guitar. <laughs> but I'll, I'll start doing the chords and it'll be kind of melodic and sad. And I have these like really intense feelings that I want to write about that can be quite dark sometimes. But then I think once I've laid down that sort of song and track I'll take it to the producer or someone and be like let's just like speed it up hype it up put a four on the floor B over it and like let's just make it party crazy and so then it's like my favorite thing is like because it still sounds melodic and pretty but it's like fun to dance to until you like sit down and hear it and you're like what is she saying <laughs> like what was that well I um, work with a girl who has like she's like a, a small business well not small now like she's she does amazing work but um, disco lemonade and I reached out to her because I loved her stuff. She makes these really sparkly fairy outfits and I reached out and was like, hey, would you like by any chance do like a commission? Like she doesn't usually do them. And so we've kind of been collaborating on these fairy looks that I've been wearing on tour. And it's been so much fun being out of just like dress like a Shirley Barber book, which is like these little kids story books that I loved growing up and um, just being like sparkly girly fairy. But then, but yeah, it does feel like women in pop often have to like have a new era and like what's next and you have to switch it up again. And it's like, there's, there's men that have been wearing the same suit for the last 20 years and going crazy, so, yeah. I think we should stop talking about it. <laughs> no, I think it's it's interesting because people like Americans and Canadians that pronounce the, the R's, they they think that it's like NAR with an R, but it's it's an O-U sound. It's like a no U. It's not NAR. But you would say it like that because you pronounce R, so the way to like make it sound almost Australian is to put a hard R on the end of it. It's really wild because I've not seen, I, 
I've not seen heaps of live performances. Like I was someone who kind of just like did things online and watched things online. I'm not really someone who likes to be in big crowds, which is like ironic, but that's my job. But I, um, so I didn't know that that was uncommon for the crowd to be very quiet during really like sentimental moments. And, and I think I just, I'm blessed with the sweetest, most considerate audience. And they, and they do go really quiet for that song. And, and I, I sob, like it's so hard to sing that live because I see people connecting with it and the lyrics and I see them feeling it and and it's really really beautiful to know that people are healing through music that I healed through writing it is like is so rewarding and like such a beautiful experience that something that was healing for me to write is healing for people to listen to I love that about music because I've healed from other people's music and I think that's something really special about it like the video then hit the button or better yet drop us a comment then check out our latest videos here and don't forget to subscribe by hitting the button here for more celebrity interviews and entertainment news.